Hello Internet, Tally Essen here and today we are talking something a little bit different because it's that time of year isn't it where we give gifts to our loved ones and get cosy with some mulled wine and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I've got my best Christmas haircut on, the office tree is up and I've got an awesome present for my most loved one of all me. Because this video, internet, is my present to myself this year. The video that I promised I'd allow myself to make if I was a really good boy who worked really hard. And okay, so I didn't really work all that hard, but that's details, so screw it. Here is my video about the Tinker class in World of Warcraft. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh great, here we go, a video of wild speculation where Taliesin fantasizes all over my face about what a Tinker class would be like, as if no one's ever done that before. But you're wrong, internet. Because this video here is a little bit more than pure wishful thinking. In fact, I am here to tell you that the Tinker class has gone beyond the realms of speculation and onto the very boundaries of existence. Internet, prepare to be amazed because for the next 10 minutes or so, I am going to present to you a watertight case and show you not only is Tinker 100% guaranteed to be the next playable class in WoW, not only will it be arriving next expansion, but that the Warcraft devs have already spent pretty much the whole of BF getting us subtly used to the idea, laying the groundwork for the races that will be able to play it and testing out ways to make it work when it gets here. So join us for this special holiday Taliesin Talks as we look at Tinkers, the next playable class in World of Warcraft and how they are already in the game, okay? Go, 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 go. So first, an explanation. What even is a Tinker and why does everyone keep talking about it? Well, Tinkers have actually been a part of the Warcraft universe since Warcraft 3 with the Goblin Tinker Hero Unit, a goblin mechanic and inventor kitted out in a homemade mech suit. And you know, there may have been just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of influence from the Gretchen mech boys of Warhammer 40k. The idea being that here was a fighter who relied more on their ingenuity and technology to do the dirty work rather than any physical strength, combat or magical ability. And it's a concept that has cropped up in Warcraft regularly over the years, both in the now non-canon, but we still bring it up whenever it supports whatever lore argument we're trying to make, Warcraft RPG, and in game too, especially in the gnome and goblin races, Heitink and Mechatork and, you know, the Venture Company being some pretty obvious examples. And the engineering profession has long been a way for players in WoW to indulge in their zany contraption and gizmo fetishes, like a steampunk and slightly rubbish James Bond. But there has always been talk of something more, of a playable class that would allow us to approach this fantasy as the be-all and the end-all, as our actual playable identity throughout the game. A class who, when they join their guildies in raid, instead of helping to bring down bosses with a sword or a spell, have a range of abilities somehow based around turrets, bots, or maybe even a mech suit of their very own. So that's what we mean when we say Tinker in a WoW context, and that's what I mean when I talk about it in this video, and we'll take some time to look at how Blizz are hinting that might actually work in-game a little bit later later on, but with the definition of Tinker established, there's a more important question. Why am I so sure that Tinkers will be the next playable class? And why am I so convinced that they will be arriving in 9.0? And why Tinker instead of one of those other classes that everyone always talks about when they talk about these sort of things, like Necromancer or Bard? Well, it's my belief that Tinker no longer deserves to be in the same category as those other classes, because they're really fun ideas that are interesting to speculate about. But over the course of Battle for Azeroth, though, I think there is genuine, compelling, and unignorable evidence that suggests that the playable Tinker class is a real-life idea that Blizzard are playing with and trying to make work. So let's start with the vaguest stuff and work our way in. Next expansion, whatever that expansion and its themes may be, is when you would expect a new playable class to be introduced on the World of Warcraft expansion timeline. Because throughout the game's history, Blizzard have kept to a pretty strict policy of a new class every other expansion. Vanilla gave us, well, you know, all of the classes, it was the start of the game. Burning Crusade made Shaman and Paladin cross-faction, but didn't give us a new class. Wrath, though, introduced Death Knights. Cataclysm was barren on the class front before Miss of Pandaria served up monks. Wog didn't really have much of anything, really. And then Legion ushered in the Age of the Demon Hunter. And with there being no new classes in Battle for Azeroth, that means we are absolutely in line for a new playable option next time out. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, well, Taliesin, simply introducing a new class into the game is a lot more complicated now than ever before, because the older WoW gets and the more classes that get added, the bigger the job Blizzard give themselves every expansion when it comes to balance. Thinking of new abilities, 
abilities and talents, even new animations that we've been seeing a lot of recently. It's probably the sheer amount of classes that devs are juggling right now that we have to blame for the lack of my lovely precious tier sets in BFA, and that's an actual tragedy. And do the devs really need the extra worry of another new addition to that roster? And you know what, Internet, that's a very good point. It would be easy to say no. Obviously not. More so than a new playable race, classes aren't just a massive amount of work to add to an expansion, they are a commitment to a whole ton of extra work every expansion. And yet, yeah, actually, I bet the last thing anyone working on WoW right now wants is to give themselves that ball ache. And yet, those expansions that do feature new classes, Vanilla, Wrath, Mists, Legion, what do those expansions all have in common? I think you know, they are the best ones. The ones that everyone loves. Cataclysm and Warlords of Draenor in particular come in for stick, and it seems like BFA might be destined to be heading that way too. So if Blizzard want to pull off another Legion Star Rescue Act next expansion, they could do worse than giving us a new class to play, that's all I'm saying. And I know the next thing you're thinking too, you're thinking, but Taliesin, all those other new classes, Death Knights, Monks and Demon Hunters, have tied in pretty seamlessly with the themes of those expansions. Expansions. If we really are in line for a Tinker class, what's that supposed to tell us about 9.0? That it's going to be set on a junkyard? It doesn't make any sense. And actually, you're totally right about that. That is a very good point, especially if, as widely expected by just about everyone at this point, next expansion turns out to be an old god, Black Empire Tentacle Fest. It's admittedly pretty hard to see where a steampunk Tinker class really fits in there. So yeah, I totally agree with that point, but to me, it actually makes me even more sure of my prediction. Because as I will now, I want to say argue, but argue is kind of the wrong word. As I will now point out, I think Blizzard is aware that their new class for next expansion doesn't fit the theme of the expansion like it has done in the past, which is why for the first time they've gone out of their way to lay the groundwork for a new class, the expansion before. And I'm now going to highlight the many clues that we've already been given, as well as some that are yet to come, that all point towards Tinker being a done deal. So it didn't take Benedict Cumberbatch doing a weird city down my museum investigation to work out where previous new classes slotted in with the themes of the expansion that they were introduced in. Thank goodness, because yo, Benny Cum, I love you and everything, but honestly, that my museum thing, let's let's never do that again, okay? Death Knights were literal champions of the Lich King. Monks were an embodiment of the completely newly discovered culture of the Pandaren. Demon Hunters were sexy flesh-bearing tattooed emo lords who were the obvious weapon to enlist against a bunch of sexy flesh-bearing demon emo lords. It makes sense. A tinker engineering robot robots and ad hoc technology to use against a newly reborn old god black empire isn't quite such an obvious fit. But if there's one thing that Blizzard has absolutely loved sneaking into WoW in the last few years, it's foreshadowing. We saw it in Legion, where in a random cave in Azuna you could find shipwrecked Zandalari and Kul'Tiran soldiers, paving the way for the locations of the coming battle for Azeroth. And I believe that Blizzard have been doing the same thing in BFA on a much grander scale, dropping subtle and not so subtle clues to get us, the player base, all used to the idea of Tinkers before 9.0, so that it doesn't feel out of place when they do. In short, if the story of the next expansion isn't going to lend itself to the new Tinker class, the next best thing is to have the story of this expansion explain and facilitate it. The first time I got a little tingle of an idea that there might be something going on in BFA was the abandoned junk heap area in Tyragard Sound, because it's this incredibly random, incredibly distinctive, and essentially meaningless corner of the map, absolutely chock full of unique art assets, and without wanting to appear too cynical in my old age, I took one look at that and I thought, you know, there is no way that they have created this many new assets just for the two or three quests that happen to be here. We are 100% going to be seeing a lot more of this sort of stuff, and as we will see in just a little bit, that proved to be bang on the money, because we will be. And then there's island expeditions, or more accurately, your opponents in island expeditions. Because if you are one of the 99.9% .9 of players that doesn't partake in the PvP version of BFA's second least popular gameplay mode, then you will be very familiar by now with the opposing computer-controlled teams from the other faction that you come up against. Their actions dictated by the incredible, game-changing new Blizzard AI, which makes them, you know, jump up and down a lot. It's uncanny, really. It could easily be an actual real-life player that you're up against here with all that 
jumping up and down and stuff. Now, obviously, the best opposition team in the entire game is the Tauren War Braves, because honestly, they are just so polite. Spirit Walker Cure is like, oh, please get back on your boat and go. That'll just be easier for everyone. And you can see that all of the War Braves represent real in-game classes. A Shaman, Druid, and a Paladin. They are all supposed to be able to pass for real-life players with their amazing AI, after all, right? And you see this in all of the other teams, too. Recognisable classes, except for a couple. Because on the Horde side, is Gazlo's Grease Monkeys, and hanging out in Boralus, you'll find Razak's Roughneck Raiders. And the thing is, they are unique among the Island Expedition crews in that they aren't recognisable in-game classes at all. They are something completely different, because here, in the game, right now, alongside NPCs representing other classes that players can choose for their characters, are what we would recognise as tinkers. And if that wasn't intriguing enough, the Grease Monkeys and the Roughneck Raiders aren't just a random collection of engineering style abilities thrown together without any thought. Each team has a recognisable tank, DPS and healer class within its ranks. We haven't just got a glimpse of a new class here, we've got the specs too. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay Taliesin, this is quite fun, but it's hardly cast iron proof that there will be a playable Tinker class next expansion. And you're right, it's not. If you were laying out the groundwork for a new class, an expansion in advance, putting a team each of goblin and gnome tinkers into a game as expedition opponents, where the AI is supposed to make you think of them as actual players, would be a pretty good start, wouldn't it? Another good thing to do, I'd imagine, would probably be to have a selection of Tinker lore characters suddenly become very important and noticeable to players, like maybe Kelsey Steelspark hopping into a mech to help out Alliance players in the Voldoon Assault in 8.1, or if you're Horde, the full-on mech battles that happen between Gallywix and Mechatalk in the new War Campaign storylines. Maybe you'd even put in dialogue that mentions in passing how the Gnome High Tinker probably wishes he was part machine. And of course, it doesn't stop there, because in 8.2, Rise of Ashara, we will actually travel to the Lost Zone of Mechagon, which uses all those spiffy new junk keep assets we mentioned earlier, and become proper besties with the Mecha Gnomes, who, oh shit, would you believe it, what a coincidence, are gnomes augmented with machinery. Just the type of race you would introduce as an allied race if you needed more options for a Tinker class. And this is the biggest clue of all for me, because one of the big drawbacks for this class was the amount of races that can actually play it. Because, you know, you've got gnomes and dwarves and goblins, and that's really about it. But another thing that's been happening in BFA is the introduction of more and more playable races that would be a good fit for an upcoming Tinker class, like Dark Iron Dwarves, or the fact that there's a cheeky Forsaken character in the Grease Monkeys, or the fact that the two most popular bets for the next allied races are Vulpira for the Horde and Mechanomes for the Alliance, two races that would just so happen to be perfect candidates for playable Tinkers. And that may not seem like much to you, but that's already three times as many different races that Demon Hunters have to choose from. It's all just too much of a coincidence for me, which is why at this stage, I am absolutely certain that this class is coming in 9.0. There's just so much in BFA that seems to be laying foundations for it and getting players used to the idea. And so with all that in mind, how would this new class actually work? Usually when you're spitballing ideas about how a made-up class that you've just made up might work in the game, you're basically just making shit up because it's pure speculation and that is absolutely okay because speculation is fun, but that's not actually something that we have to do too much of in this case. We can instead just look at those tinkers that already exist in BFA and see what they do. Like we said before, the Grease Monkeys and the Roughneck Raiders already appear to exist in three pretty distinct classes, so it's easy to see how a Tinker healing class would utilise bots to proactively heal their teammates and decoys to draw attacks away from them. They could also do like an Overwatch Anna style shooting syringes of awesome revitalising if slightly suspicious looking liquids into their allies. And this raises a great thing about Tinkers in general. At last, we could have another class who could equip firearms. Further to that, interestingly, in Warcraft 3, Tinker was the only melee class that used intelligence as a primary attribute, and that could be really fun in WoW too. A tank that needs intelligence gear? A healer looking for intelligence on their guns? Yeah, this is fun, sign me up! For a DPS spec, yeah, it's true that the gnomes and goblins in BFA use walking bomb bot things, just like in Warcraft 3, as well as turrets, which in itself I think is quite an interesting mechanic. Could WoW support an 
actual turret DPS class where you run around like Torbjorn placing and maintaining turrets that are liable to all get wiped out every time there's raid wide damage, I would be up for giving that a try. But alternatively, you could go full Kelsey Steel Spark and jump into a fully automated mini mech. And this leads us to probably the most exciting prospect of a Tinker class the mech suit. Because yeah, as you'd expect, both the Grease Monkeys and Roughneck Raiders have recognisable tanks that use proper, fully-fledged mech suits to get down and dirty with, and this would seem like a great way to have a playable tank tinker spec. Which just makes you think, doesn't it? The law of 8.1 is so determined to push the idea of characters legit using mech suits as a totally viable Warcraft combat option, so why couldn't your mech suit be a genuine part of your Tinker character customization? Now, this wouldn't be new. Death Knights and Demon Hunters are both classes that have their own unique character customization options. What if when you started your Tinker class, you didn't just pick the visual features of your character, but of your mech suit as well? In the same way that Druids can shift seamlessly in and out of bear form to tank, so your Gnome or Mecha Gnome or Dwarf or Dark Iron or Goblin or Forsaken or Vulpira could summon and hop in and out of their very own personal mech. I mean, come on, you don't need me to tell you, this would be so amazingly cool. And again, not something that doesn't even already exist in the game. Druids, Shadow Priests and Worgen all have different forms that they take for combat. This is just that, but with an added layer of customization. And if you're going to go to all that trouble, it'd be a shame to make it just a tank thing. The mech suit saddle up could be something all Tinker specs could do. And there, straight away, you have a totally unique class here, but one that is based 100% on things that are in the game and that Blizzard have been going out of their way to highlight in this expansion, with the chance to utilize some really fun mechanics and abilities that still aren't alien to the combat systems already in the game, and which offer a huge new range of cool visual customization options, which is something we know Blizzard are totally in love with right now. Because, you know, they know that in Introducing cool new options like that is a great and relatively easy way to keep players engaged. And a class with its own mech suit options? That would be an absolute gold mine for them and for us, the player. Maybe when you take any of these things I've talked about here in isolation, they seem like just a little bit too much of a coincidence, but I think when you take them as a whole and see the way that Blizzard is right now putting Tinkers right in front of us in Battle for Azeroth, I am totally convinced that it's because we are getting this new class next expansion. Tinkers with customizable mechs taking on the old gods in the new Black Empire. Um, yes. Yes, please. All types of big, glorious, wonderful yes, that'll do nicely. But what do you guys think? Do you agree that it's looking pretty likely for the Tinker next expansion, or am I just talking out of my exhaust? How would the spec work? How would you play it? And probably most important of all, you know, how could we possibly make it the male wearing new class that we so desperately need? Let us know in the comments below, and thank you for joining us today. I enjoy getting all that off my chest finally, and if you enjoyed it too, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make these videos happen. This is our 80th public video of 2018, including 39 episodes of the Weekly Reset, which is absolutely amazing, really, and we're not done yet. And without you guys and your support, well, there would be a lot less Taliesin and Levitel, I'll put it that way. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is crucial. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Evertel. Until next time, cheerio.